All right, here's the Nixie project. Um, I wanted something that would be really unique and that nobody else had. And um, this is it right here. It's a box about the size of a cigar box. It's painted blue. Got some stuff inside of it and stuff on the panel here. And um, I call it my Nixie Pet. Pet Nixie, whatever. All right, what can a Nixie pet do? Well, let's see. Nixie. Hello there. Oh no. You can talk to it and it can talk back. Oh no. <laughs> One. One. Okay. Two. Okay. Four. Six. Okay. Okay, he can put out numbers when you tell him to put out a number. All right, what else can he do? Um, add. Okay. Okay, he took the last... He asked what now? Um, he took the last two numbers that we gave him and he added them together. Nixie. Four. Okay. Three. Okay. Seven. Okay. Divide. Okay. You see, he has a decimal point. He has a decimal point. The, the answer was 2.3 and he uh, has a decimal point. Nixie. What? Increment. Okay. That's now. <laughs> Nixie. What? Decrement. So he can incre increment numbers and decrement numbers. Nixie. Nixie. What? Five. Okay. Square. Okay. That's now. See, he took five and squared it to twenty-five. Nixie. What? Six. Okay. Three. Okay. Multiply. Okay. That's now. I think I did multiply already. Let's see. What else we haven't done? Okay, he's got one more he can do. Nixie. Six. Okay. Two. What? Two. Okay. Subtract. Okay. See? Right now. Okay, once once he has been working a little bit, he gets tired and he, he has to be put to sleep. Nixie. Sleep. Okay. Good night. And that's my my Nixie pet. I uh, had to have something unique to use um, Dalibor's um, beautiful Nixie tube in. And this is it. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the inside of it and we'll see what um, what, what makes it up. Okay, we've got an Arduino uh, Uno. Um, that's a uh, 
It's a little single board computer. They cost ten bucks on online. You can get one of these for ten bucks. I, I bought four of them for forty bucks. Okay, it has a speech recognizer module. It's called Easy VR2. It costs 50 bucks, and then there's another little development board that you have to get with it, and that's another 10, 15 bucks, something like that. It's about $75 for the entire setup to make it um, recognize speech and playback speech. Very, very uh, clever little uh, setup, especially for the money. Okay, uh, we have a little motor and a, a pulley setup, and that's connected to the carriage. Nixie! And that just raises the carriage there and makes it to where um, you can see the Nixie tube. You, you don't really need, if you're going to make something like this, you don't need to have it that fancy. I mean, I just did it that way because it was um, something to do. Okay, now, for driving the Nixie tube, there's a driver board, and that has got the, um, the driver ICs for the, I mean, the driver transistors for the digits, and it also has a small H-bridge type driver for the motor to make the motor go uh, forward and reverse. There's a set of limit switches on it that goes ahead and um, detects the position of the circuit board, so it just breaks the circuit when it gets to the, to the two extremes. And um, the power supply, we have a transformer that puts out um, uh, six volts at an amp, and that's rectified and is used to get the. Uh, it, it puts out a raw voltage of about nine volts, and that goes into the Arduino, which has a regulator on it already, and that also supplies the five volts to the um, speech recognizer. And then the raw nine volts um, supplies a little audio amplifier that uh, drives the speaker and um, the 9 volts that uh, runs the motor. The, the 9 volts raw unfiltered, uh, I mean f raw filtered DC goes to the driver uh, ICs which, which runs the motor. Okay, let's look at the circuit. <clears throat> Power supply is absolutely simple. We simply have two bridge rectifiers connected to the transformer filter capacitors. No regulators, no anything. You don't need any of that. Okay, the audio amp, it's a little LM386 um, single IC. It puts out about 200 milliwatts with 9 volts on it and that's used to drive the speaker. Uh, there's a little gotcha when using the speech recognizer. The output of the speech recognizer is an H bridge. Therefore, its output sits at about half power supply, which is about two and a half volts, and it swings, you know, plus and minus two and a half volts. Well, you can't stick that into the power amplifier. The direct output of the speech recognizer is, it, it's, it's okay in volume, but you have to listen. It, it's probably about 20 milliwatts, 30 milliwatts, something like that. It's very low. So you need a little amplifier on it to get the kind of volume that we're getting here. Okay? Um, we just use a little transformer to go ahead and isolate that, that offset from that output of the speech recognizer and we have a little volume control that we can use to set the volume to whatever we want. Okay, that takes care of the power supply and the audio. <clears throat> okay, the driver is dirt simple. Okay, um, we've got a decoder IC. We put any number in here in a binary format of um, 0 through 9 and that de decodes, the 4028 decodes it into one of nine outputs. Okay, we take each of those and we drive a high voltage transistor which is used to drive the digits. These are little 400 PIV uh, or 400 VCC uh, volt tra transistors uh, that will go ahead and um, take the high voltage. The um, now I put individual driving resistors in the cathodes. Um, I could have done it with one resistor, but I did not know at the time. When I designed it up and built it, I did not know whether I would have to have a separate resistor and a separate value for each digit to equalize the currents. It turned out that only two digits really needed different. Um, the, the digit number one needed an 18K and the decimal point needed a 56K to keep the current within a, a reasonable 
uh, range. The digits uh, on these big Nixies run at 15 milliamps and um, I, I could probably run it a little higher. Um, I might get a little more brilliance out of it if I ran it a little more than 15 milliamps. Um, the high voltage is turned on and off by using a FET optical relay. Um, these have a um, uh, an open um, a, a drain uh, voltage rating of 350 volts. So we have our 300 volts out of our rectifier going to there, and then the anode is connected to the um, to the other connection. And whenever we give the command from the computer, we can turn on that that relay, and that turns the B plus onto the Nixie tube. That me makes it to where your Nixie tube is not glowing when you have the the top closed. When the when the when the top is down, then it goes into sleep mode, and the um, the whole circuit pulls very little current, so it doesn't heat up or anything, and doesn't waste doesn't waste your hours of operation on your Nixie tube. Okay, the the decoding could have been done using Arduino pins. However, it would have required using um, port D, and one, two of the pins on port D are used for the serial monitor in troubleshooting. And if you use the two pins for driving Nixie digits, and you need your serial monitor for doing troubleshooting, which I very much did need, uh, it, it, the, the software for this thing was, was a nightmare to write. It, it, it's a very simple conceptually, but um, there, there's an awful lot of complicated little gotchas that, that show up in there so that that serial monitor uh, really was a help and therefore I went ahead and used the decoder rather than simply connecting each um, digit onto a port pin and then doing more software decoding which would have been more complications in the software making it take even longer to go ahead and develop so by using a, a, a 20 cent decoder chip plugged onto the port, you simply write the number to the port and the correct digit lights up. I mean, you, you know, it's the number you get out of the mathematical operation is written to the port. You don't have to sit there and change it into which digit it is, which port number it is, and, and that kind of nonsense. Um, also, making it blink the, the thing on and off would be more complicated. All right, so that's the, uh, the driver. Now, the easy VR the, the motor driver, I didn't show the motor driver. Okay, to drive the motor, we have an H bridge. It uses transistors. These are small TO5 transistors. The motor only pulls 100 milliamps at 9 volts, so they don't have to be big transistors, don't need the heat sinks. Uh, they're just little TO5 transistors hooked up in a common emitter driver type circuit. Um, we, we have an inverter so that when we take the port pin and we drive it high, it puts one on and the other uh, in the opposite direction by using an inverter. And then when the port goes the other direction, it just swaps and that drives the motor. The limit switches are connected through two diodes. So when the, when the, when the polarity is in one direction through the motor, it runs and cuts the limit switch off for that one. And then if you give it the opposite polarity, the motor runs in the opposite direction until it hits the other limit switch and then shuts it off for that polarity. So it's a very simple little operation, no, no uh, complications at all. Very easy to make and all the components are small and, and little bitty. You don't need to have great big heat sinks and other stuff like that. And that's what drives the, the motor. Now, there are a few things about the, 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 the speech recognizer. One of them is this particular module is set up right now for user-dependent speech. What this means is that whoever programs the speech is the only person it's going to recognize reliably. So there is another uh, programming method for it, which is speaker-independent. But for speaker independent, you have to pay money for the development system for it. And I haven't done that yet. I might go ahead and buy it because this, this is pretty neat. It, it looks pretty neat. But being speaker dependent does not necessarily mean that this person who programmed it is going to be successful in making it work. For example, what I found happened was I programmed it in the morning. Well, that afternoon, I went to use it, and it was very poor in recognizing. So I went ahead and reprogrammed the, the speech vocabulary, and it recognized perfectly again. And then the next morning when I went to use it, nope, would not recognize reliably. 
So the small changes in the inflections of your voice from morning to afternoon or from sleeping overnight is enough to make it to where the, it, it gets to where it's very iffy in its recognition. Some of the words would recognize very easily, very reliably, others would not. So um, that's something you have to keep in mind when you're working with this thing because you can go to lunch and come back after lunch and it won't recognize anymore. And that's because uh, you know the, the hot sauce on your, <laughs> on your um, taco is interfering with your voice and you no longer sound exactly the same to the speech recognizer. So that's something you have to keep in mind when you're working with this. And I went round and round with the software trying to get it to work before I discovered that that's what the problem was. It wasn't my software, it was the, the actual speech recognizer itself. So if you're going to develop using that speech recognizer, then you know keep that in mind that you have to um, have it very easy to program. You want it to where you can get that module out of your project and connect it onto the programming board. There's a little programming board that you buy with this. You, when, when you buy the recognizer, you can buy this little programming board and that connects onto the computer through a USB port and you can very easily program the entire uh, the entire device just using clicks on the screen. Um, if you do it in your project, you have to go through all kinds of rigmarole to go ahead and program it. So you, you want to have it to where you can easily pull that board out of there, that speech recognizer. You want to be able to pull it out of there, take it out, and put it on your programming board, and do the programming, and then put it back in your project. Well, that's it. That's what uh, that's what my Nixie project was. It's it's a, a a little Nixie pet. One. One. Okay. Four. What? Four. Okay. Add. Okay. Yeah, he knows how to add. Yeah. Uh, Six. Well, oh, I have to say his name first. Nixie. What? Six. Okay. Square. Okay. Thirty-six. He knows how to do it. Right now. Now the the amount of memory in the Arduino is about 32k for your program. This entire program right now is using about 11k. So there's it's about one third of the um, memory. So there's lots more room left in there for adding more commands later on. You know, after I get you know, some more time, I'll go ahead and add more stuff for him to do. The speech recognizer, I'm only using maybe 10% of the speech recognizer. So there's room in the speech recognizer for dozens more words, literally dozens more. It'll hold over a hundred words. And the, um, the, the, the speech playback will hold about eight minutes, roughly eight minutes. So that's a whole lot of um, interaction that you could program using these, these simple little uh, modules. Um, the whole thing cost maybe $150, you know, total. You know, that's all the parts. Okay, that's uh, my Nixie, uh, Nixie pet. Um, sleep. Sleep. Oops, I gotta say his name first. Nixie. Nixie. What? Sleep. What? Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> Good night, little guy. That's it.